Thanks for joining us once again. We focus today on the Tesla $250,000 500-mile semi-truck versus the Daimler Freightliner $400,000 uh, electric truck or electric semi with 230 miles of range. Complete slaughter is our assessment. Please take time to like and subscribe. Please join us on Patreon for ideas on better investing and trading. Thanks, and let us get to our show. So, since the semi was introduced uh, five years ago, Freightliner's parent, uh, Daimler, has been one of Tesla's largest critics. And they were actually caught off guard by Tesla's moves into the electric space of semis. As you probably know, Daimler and, uh, and I would say uh, Volvo trucks represent greater than 50%, more like 60% of the market share. And Daimler has really led the charge. Once Daimler heard about uh, what was happening with the semi, they quickly recognized that they were at a competitive disadvantage, number one, but number two, they basically have an overall strategy of building relationship with current customers uh, to secure sort of charging facilities as well as cabling as a way to try to stay in the game as Tesla makes the move to take over everything. Now, it's been strange, frankly, because with five years lead time to respond to Tesla, we're still in a beta process at many of the Daimler customers. From what we can tell from reading, etc., Daimler has a process going where they're actually giving away free trucks as part of their beta process. And customers, you know, where they already have large numbers of uh, vehicles placed, are really happy to take the free vehicles and give Daimler an opportunity to respond to the Tesla threat. So uh, from what we've read on the beta process, a lot of customers are taking one or two copies of the current iteration of the eCascadia. They're then uh, uh, spending the time to sort of observe the performance of these vehicles under different circumstances to figure out where they want to go be it with Daimler or Tesla. Another method that's being utilized by Daimler is they brought together many customers to do joint planning uh, for the e EVs going forward. So again, they're trying to reestablish the fact that they would have a working relationship and that they're going to leverage that relationship to optimize uh, customer interests. Um, I have to say again, given that it's been five years uh, for Daimler to prepare, one would have expected uh, a ready freight liner by now with the help of uh, corporate partner Daimler. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is sort of take a look at the value proposition difference between Daimler and Tesla. It's my assessment, frankly, that Tesla's offering a million dollar vehicle for 250K. And, you know, the folks at Daimler are offering a 400K vehicle um, that, that really can't meet the performance specs that Tesla's laid out there. In particular, we could just go through the basic numbers that are, exist now. As I said in the opening, number one, we have this issue of uh, Diamond's charging $400,000 for a 230 mile range vehicle. And given the fact that the vehicles are sort of unseasoned, not with real customers performing on the regular, one would have to say that, you know, it's really a beta or a test vehicle that's still in the hand of customers and that they haven't uh, sort of stamped as a finished product that can be broadly distributed. I would say the next 
sort of performance parameters, as you know, Tesla's at 250K approximately, Daimler's at 400K. Tesla's offering 500 miles of range, Daimler's offering 230. So in essence, Daimler's offering half the range uh, that Tesla currently is, um, you know, for double the price. And I've been thinking about this show for the last three months, and every time I repeat those two numbers, I have to say I'm kind of stunned because as a corporate buyer, yes, you can leverage off the relationship you already have with Daimler-Benz, but in essence, you have to buy two Daimler trucks to equal what, if you will, the performance of one Tesla truck will do. And given a business where margins can be tight, et cetera, I have a hard time figuring out how uh, Daimler and Volvo and the other big competitors stay in the game with a competitive threat that performs like Tesla does. So uh, I'm hopeful that they actually sort of pull something together that's a better solution than we've seen because it could end up being uh, a fairly rapid route. The next thing that so we haven't discussed heavily is the vertical integration between uh, the mega packs and storage, you know, power storage uh, that Tesla produces itself, combined with things like um, the liquid cool, um, uh, high speed charging, you know, just a lot of core competencies are built into trucks, which adds the value proposition that goes well beyond just the range difference. Uh, so I'd have to say that um, I really am shocked and I thought that we'd get a lot more robust response uh, from, uh, from all the Tesla competitors than this when we look at the, the largest vehicles. So, um, you know, it's a long-winded statement to just say that where we are now is... I believe we're in kind of the bright days for Tesla and its delivery of the semi, and we're kind of in the dark days of what might happen to large diesel vehicles, especially in locations like the Port of Los Angeles uh, and other ports around the world where pollution is a big issue from diesel vehicles. The, uh, the beginning of the show, you know, we chose to do a clip as Elon was discussing some of the competitive advantages that Tesla has in terms of R&D as well as testing from sharing parts between cars and, and trucks. And this is something that's typically definitely not done because the whole trucking business for standard ICE vehicles is so different. But this is another competitive advantage that Tesla offers is being able to spread the R&D costs into the truck across uh, a broad range of, uh, of vehicles and therefore having the number of iterations that are out there. So I just think that the number of fronts that uh, Tesla is leading and then delivering that into, the, into uh, their trucks, I really felt like is the difference between going to graduate school for your PhD versus you know, a really good high school student entering college. You know, it should be that the ICE competitors that have been in business for 100 years should really be dominating here because they've had customer relationships for that long. But they seem to have dropped the ball over the last five years because all of Tesla's core competencies are in evidence and they're coming together to pretty much destroy uh, the traditional ICE industry. So we look very much forward to your comments on all this. I believe this is one of the reasons why, you know, I think we get a nice pop for Tesla on the recovery front when you add up how many cyber trucks are gonna be sold combined with the semis starting to roll out and that revenue starting to run in as well. I just think that there's a path towards, you know, new and large growth for Tesla that represents real opportunity for the stock but not immediately, we're definitely on a uh, sort of time horizon for this all to come together. So again, we look forward to your comments uh, and please take time to share. 
I would also like to encourage you to like and subscribe. Uh, next, I'd like to briefly dive into our health tips. There's a professor that I ran into who's in the who's a MD PhD and teaches at the University of Louisville. And he is a specialist in what's called upper respiratory cancer. What he explained is that right now people are really, really busy. And based on that bus busyness, there's a trend towards eating and then immediately jumping in bed. And what happens is the stomach bile or acid that digests your food will actually roll up into the upper respiratory area as this is done a lot and actually cause cancer. So his recommendation is that one delay going to bed uh, for at least two hours after eating. And ideally, one should delay the bedtime for at least four hours to allow everything to digest before you go to bed. So I think that's the health tip that I'd like to present for today. Uh, as part of our routine effort for you to have uh, a healthier outlook and a healthier life based on things that we're discussing. At any rate, um, this is Greg for Testofan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. Tschüss, au revoir, la hit road, hoda hafez, strazice, ni hao ma, kombanwa, Japanese, hey do, Swedish. And in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good man. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day and bye for now.